Welcome back to the workshop, everybody. So glad you could be with me here today. I'm going to try to make this a quick one, but we may get carried away. So, nothing to do about planes today. I wanted to talk a little bit about squares. And how many squares does one person need? And how square is square? And so on and so forth. So to make it real quick, for years, when I was machine woodworking, I kept this one at the uh, table saw and my other machines to check and see if my blade was square to the table or if the miter fence was square to the blade. So this one had very limited function or use. It's a Stanley, not a very expensive tool back then. Okay, but I couldn't afford any of the fancy ones. Uh, fairly easy to read, chrome plated, cast iron, and as you can see, the uh, one leg is a little thicker than the other, than the other, so it, but it was square enough. Then I bought another one not too long ago on eBay, it is a Miller's Falls. I don't know if you can see the name on there. And it is very nicely made. Very nicely made. I would say it was, you know, on, on equivalent with the Stanley, uh, with the Starrett's of its day. And this one has served me very well at my workbench for years. Then, I wanted a small pocket square just for checking the edges of uh, boards to see if they were square and for checking plain blades as I was grinding them. This was a nice little pocket square. It's not cheap. It's a Starrett. Um, picked it up on eBay at a discount compared to buying brand new. And that, uh, this is a, called a double square. It's square on both sides. These are called combination squares. They're called combination squares because number one, you can check inside squares with the outside of the tool. You can check outside squares with the inside of the tool. And you've got a 45 degree here, which you can check from both sides. That's why it's called a combination square. And they also added a level in here, which you would use that primarily if you're setting up a machine or you want to check to see that your bench is level. It's, it's really not a very good level, but it, it, it is a level. And it's on the level. So, while floating around on eBay one day, not too many years ago, I found this one. This is a brown and sharp. So this is a six inch, this is a 12 inch, this is a four inch. So I was good to go. And this little attachment here is for center finding. Okay? There is one other attachment that's available for combination planes and it is a protractor with a level built in. And a lot of this stuff was all designed for machinist use, not for woodworkers. Okay, and last up would be the area of carpentry squares, and I don't have my uh, framing square here. It's basically a big flat piece of steel in an L shape with numbers on it, and it's used primarily by carpenters for framing houses. It should not be used as a cabinet making tool. Uh, are they accurate enough for framing a house? Possibly. For some carpentry and quick cabinetry? Possibly. But for fine furniture, they, they, they just, I don't know, they're just not my cup of tea. But what I did find recently at a big box store is uh, there were a pair of these and they were reduced. They were like seven bucks. They're aluminum and they're called a speed square. 
This one happens to be made by Empire, made in USA. It's got some common rafter information. It's got a lot of different gizmos and whatnot for carpenters. However, the reason I bought it was to replace this one at the table saw because it gives me exactly what I need. And it has a 45 and it can be used as a regular square. So I brought this one home and I tested it for square and surprisingly for a inexpensive tool it is precise so that brings us to the next question how many squares does somebody need ah, well I guess you need a few more I went and bought this and I took a gamble I bought a few starrets over the years and returned every single one of them why I didn't like the way they were machined. So I had a coupon for 25% off. So I figured at 25% off, even if it's not machined the way I like it, and the way I like it is I like my legs, the long leg, the short leg, and the 45, to be the same thickness visually, like this one. Look at the difference in the castings. This is an old Miller's Falls, and this is a modern Stanley. They, they just, well, regardless. So, I got this at 25% off. And I said, at 25% off, I'll go for it. Because then what I can do is part with these two. So, how accurate is your square? How do you test it? Well, you set it out at its maximum extension, which is approximately nine and five eighths, maybe a little more. So let's set it at exactly nine and five eighths. Now, the simplest way to check, and there are other methods, and there's a few out there that are promoted by different professional woodworkers. But the common way to check is to take some flat surface with a perfectly straight edge. And I like plywood because that comes from the mill. It's usually very, 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 very straight. But you can test it with a straight edge or you can plane it straight. And you place your square right up against it. Make sure it's laying flat and true. And then you take a very, very sharp pencil. You can use a knife. The only reason why I don't use a knife is it scores the wood. I could put a piece of paper underneath here and score the paper. But I use a pencil. So I'm in I'm in square, okay, I'm down flat, and I make a very light line. Across the plywood, all right, then you just flip the square over, and you come back as close as you can to that line, but still be able to see space and you make a second line next to it. When you compare those two lines they need to be the same. Okay, or they need to at least be close enough for the work you're doing. I did it with this one. Remember, a speck of dust can change the result. Or if it's not laying flat. That one is amazing. That is amazing. That is dead on. Okay? 
He, we'll even check the old ones. Now here's a tip. I don't know how many of you know this about pencils. In the workshop, it is recommended to use a pencil that's not too hard, not too soft. See now this one, this one is not dead on, but it's close. And then my old Miller's Falls. Let's go in here. Got to make sure you're flat. You got to be flat and you got to be in. But about pencils, when you're drawing lines, if your pencils are too hard, you can actually score the wood. If they're too soft, you'll just wear out the point quickly. That one's good. So you get the point. Back to pencils. I'm a trained, educated, certificate, diploma received draftsman. Okay? And one of the first things you learn as a draftsman when you're drawing lines, because the line has to be the same from the beginning to the end. You can't have a tiny thin line on this end and a really wide thick line on that end. So what we learned was to twirl the pencil in use. Okay? Sometimes you go slower, sometimes you go faster. What that does, and I hope you can see this, I'll, I'm going to draw right-handed, which I'm a lefty. So you, you have your straight edge and you put your pencil in there and you're twisting it. whole length. So your line is the same all the way through, but look what it does to the pencil tip. Can you see that? I'm going to try to get a little closer, I don't know. It keeps it pointy. It keeps it round and it keeps it pointy. That's Walter's tip of the day. So, now you know how to check for square. You draw a line, you flip over, and you draw a second line. Okay? And the distance between those lines should match. Or if you're going to get really accurate and you use a knife, you should fall right in that same knife line. So what if, what if your square is out, ever so slightly? Well, there are ways to correct them. I'm not going to get into that because I don't want you messing up your tool. If you're doing typical cabinet making and furniture making, and you've got a square where the, line, where the square lines, you can check the inside too. If your square lines all keep lining up with each other, within, let's say, a hair, that's three thousandths of an inch, you're good to go. If you're out, if you're out of square, more than the thickness of a pencil line, you can start getting some very bad results. But, these appear to be in pretty good shape. I'm still totally blown away by this one. Totally blown away. So if you're on a budget and you go to a, one of your big box stores or a hardware store, or even online, and you buy one of these, 
and you test it and it's dead on, that'll get you going. You don't have, you have six inches instead of nine and a half or 12. See, that's the other thing too, is when you're dealing with, with this, you've only got nine and a half inches or nine and five eighths from the face to the tip. So, if you need something longer than that, you need to put an auxiliary straight edge on there. And so you'd have to have a second straight edge. They do make longer blades, so you can buy just another blade, to, like a 12, 18 inch or 24 inch. But this usually gets everybody by. So, I went and treated myself to a starret. I'm going to see how I like it over the next few days. And it works beautifully. And they all come with this little scriber doohickey. That's because these are, in reality, machinist tools. And you would use blue ink on your steel. It's called dicum. And when you use your square, you'd have this hardened scribe right here. You don't have to go looking for another tool. But you do see a lot of times in uh, used ones, when you buy them, these are missing. You really don't lose anything in woodworking, but they're missing. So that's it for today. I'll be selling this one. Parting with that one. This one stays. This one's on trial basis. The new Starrett. And I will hang on to my Miller's Falls for a while just because it's, it's served me well over the years. And this one stays in the wings for the times when I need something small or I want to do center finding. And this, absolutely worth every penny I paid for it considering how square it is. Now it is aluminum, it's going to get nicked, you can't put a hard knife up against it, to, but for pencil marking and for checking uh, your casework for being square and stuff like that, I'm telling you, you put, a, you put two pieces of wood together and you want to slide that in there, that'll tell you if it's square or not. So, hey listen, if you found something useful here today, educational or maybe entertaining, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe because that way you'll stay in tune with new videos as they come. Head out to your shop. Go check your squares for square. Walter out.